Okay, it looks like we're live. So, hello and welcome to our today's webinar. I'd like to welcome everybody who was able to join us today. Thank you guys for watching and being a part of this webinar on this fine um, autumn day. So, whether it's morning or afternoon or even you know, the evening for you guys. So, again, thanks for taking the time. Uh, we hope to make this um, webinar um, as informative as possible and make make it worth your while. So today uh, we're going to talk about a very important and uh, uh, hot topic, I would say, and that's the importance of uh, partnerships when it comes to the satellite technologies and remote sensing solutions. So um, before we start and before I present our um, speakers, um, who's going to will be talking um, uh, with me um, uh, on the partnership topic today? Uh, I'd like to check, do a quick, you know, sound check, just to make sure that you guys can hear me okay, and uh, we have no connection issues. So, if you don't mind, please um, put a plus sign there in the chat window, and also if you could tell us where you guys are joining from, what countries, just again for us to make sure that. We see the geographies, you know, the countries and continents. All right, I see, um, I see Nigeria, I see Egypt, Ghana. All right, guys, thanks so much for taking up the UK, Italy. All right, a lot of, a lot of people, different countries. All right, so this is great. This is very good news. So, like I was saying, today, um, today with the with me, we're we're going to have several of our most active partners, um, who kindly agreed to be a part of this webinar and going to i'm going to be joined by uh the georgian farmers association from germany also have susan shuttle environment data from germany and also we have uh geosat from colombia so we're going to be talking um about their use cases their uh ways and how they use our technology but obviously before that i'd like to um show you a quick agenda for our today's discussion so We'll start with a quick introduction on um, EOSDA, on what kind of company we are, on um, where we came from, and what we're what we're doing, and where we're going in the future. Kinds of plans we have. We'll focus a little bit more about the um, on the solutions and services, the product lines that we have to offer to our partners and end users. And then we'll talk about obviously the importance of partnerships in the precision agriculture area. Um, after that, um, I'll be, you know, passing the floor to our partners. You know, that's what we're here for, obviously. So we'll be um, starting with the uh, Georgian Farmers Association. We have Annie with us. Uh, then um, be happy to pass the floor to Susan from Susan Schottel, uh, from Germany. And we also have Daniel with us from Geosat, um, Colombia. So they'll be talking about their use cases, their um, case studies, you know, how exactly they're using um, our technologies and how they have been helping them in their day-to-day -day business activities. After that, we're going to take a quick look at our partner network, um, what kind of industries we're working with, the business verticals, the geographies, and also the specific use cases. We'll not be able to cover all of them, obviously, but we'll just you know try to um, give you guys a better idea of, um, again, how you can potentially start using our uh, remote sensing solutions even today and uh, start benefiting your business and your clients. Um, so then we'll uh, talk about the importance of the account management, the customer success, and we'll obviously try to speak a little bit about the um, bundled um, packages that we have for partners. Um, but uh, yeah, it's going to will happen uh, shortly. And after that, obviously, we'll have a quick Q&A. So again, for your questions, um, for any kind of comments, any queries, if you have them, we also have um, Kirill's today with us. So he's our chat moderator. He's going to be actively present there in chat. Again, in case you guys have any questions, anything to ask, please feel free to drop your questions right there in, in the chat uh, box. And we'll be addressing all of those questions at the end of this uh, uh, webinar, at the end of this discussion. In case um, some of you I'm talking about the people who, unfortunately, were not able to join today or uh, 
maybe in case you'd want to watch the webinar, we would have uh, the recording available for you. So we'd be sending this over to all of the participants and you'll be able to um, watch it again in case you would want to we'll brush up on that. So let's just begin. So the first slide that I have here, and it's basically again to give everyone a quick um, idea about the kind of company uh, uh, who we are. Um, so in a nutshell, EOSDA is a global provider of satellite-based imagery analytics. And the company has been on the market since 2014. Uh, currently, we have our headquarters in Mountain View, California, uh, and we have a lot of our R&D facilities and centers here in Ukraine. And uh, as far as the um, ecosystem, I would say we have a total of about 220 experts, and the specialists, including our own uh, scientists, the GIS specialists, um, our own software developers. So basically all of the components, uh, all of the moving parts and, you know, the driving forces of the um, company are in-house and we don't rely on any like third parties, I would say. And all of our solutions are developed here. And uh, that's something that gives us that extra flexibility. And uh, we're uh, very proud of that. So when it comes to... Um, our solutions you know the service lines that we have so uh, if we take a look at the right hand side here uh take we can see that we have several different lines um, of uh, of business that, and different types of uh, applications that we can deliver to the general audience so first of all we can start with our software as a service products those are our outside of the box applications ready to use systems so uh, applications like uh, let's say crop monitoring or force monitor or even our land viewer so um, in case you are not familiar so i'll be talking a little bit more about those applications i uh, like to focus more on their technical sides and the functionalities and features that each of the systems can bring to the table and how they can benefit your business so i have uh, uh, more information on each of them on a, on a different slide um, if we uh, move a little bit to the right, we see that we have uh, access to a lot of custom solutions or solutions on request. And that is possible primarily because we have our own science division. So over 25 PhD professors, our own GIS specialists and people who can basically create any type of uh, model from scratch that you can apply to your specific uh, use case. So I'm talking about custom solutions um, uh, similar to crop classification, uh, field boundary detection, uh, yield prediction, uh, harvest monitoring, and many more. But those are not obviously all of the applications that we have. So we have experience with a lot more. And it all comes down to basically us understanding the specific needs of your uh, request. Um, in this case, we'd um, usually be talking a little about a little bit of ground data in order again to teach the model to calibrate it make sure that it's working effectively for your specific use case and then we can uh, ramp it up and run it across a larger geography a larger territory and then again if we take our focus and uh, pay attention to the left hand side here we see that we also have our own uh, satellite constellation so it's eos set and this is our first um satellite out of seven in total so we have a uh, the plan to launch seven satellites but for now uh, we have one so we had a successful launch of our first satellite this year and and this one is um, what makes the satellite constellation so unique is the fact that it's uh the first um agri-focused constellation. So uh, basically, again, I, I'll be talking a little bit more about this constellation and what makes it so unique and important um, on the market. So and, uh, what sort of sets us apart. Um, if we uh, take, a, take a look here, we'd see that we have some of the clients, just again, to give you guys an idea of the type of companies that we're working with. So we have uh, the World Bank. Uh, we've done multiple uh, custom projects for them. We have Kubota, a Japanese tractor company. Uh, we have Dole, uh, Corteva AgriScience, Tel One, uh, Martin Bauer, and many, many organizations that would be using our systems and solutions for their specific uh, business needs. So obviously, um, all of their requirements, all of their use cases would be very specific, very unique, and uh, they're 
using different types of solutions. So, and we are happy to be flexible enough to offer all of those um, services to our clients. If you can take a quick look at our, our um, uh, customer base and the partner base, um, we have a total of about 25 partners right now, 25 active uh, partners all over the world. Uh, we're currently analyzing about 66 million square kilometers uh, of farmlands and forests on a, on a monthly basis and we have a total of about 1 million um, users all across the world We've been using all of our applications uh, crop monitoring forest monitoring land viewer and our customer retention uh, rate is close to 97 percent so that's something that we're uh, really proud of because our clients uh, love us and we in return love our clients and do our best to deliver the great solutions for their businesses Moving on, so like I promised, we have a, a dedicated slide on uh, for our um, uh, satellite, for our EOS set constellation. And uh, you might be wondering why would we have another satellite constellation? Because we have so many of them out there already. So what's the point of having another one? And the um, short answer is that basically it has to do with our history so we can you know just take a, a step back basically and since day one we've always been a software company and we would always work with our partners with our vendors where we would get the satellite imagery from and then on top of it we'd run our models with uh, put our analytics would enrich the uh, imagery would make it more actionable and insightful and then we deliver that to the end user but um no matter how well we would combine different types of imagery from different vendors from different partners that we work with we always knew that there were some gaps uh, in terms of uh, the um, analytical part, I would say. So we wanted to overcome the challenge that uh, bottleneck and make the imagery more insightful, more actionable, more dynamic, more affordable in a way. So the, uh, and the only way for us to do that was to basically have our own uh, tools, uh, set to uh, a set of tools, basically. And uh, that's something that led us to the development of our constellation. So we started from scratch, uh, from square one, so to speak, we developed the constellation from the very from the ground up and we had a successful launch this year so for example um our uh, each of the satellites that we uh, will have would be equipped with the uh, 13 agri-focused bands including uh, near infrared red edge vapor swirl channel so all of those will be very helpful for uh, making our imagery more insightful, more dynamic. We'll have the possibility of a one-day revisit on tasking for specific areas of interest. And uh, obviously the resolution of the satellite would be um, high enough. So we, we talk about the panchromatic resolution of 1.4 meters and the multispectral um, uh, uh, resolution of 2.8 meters, uh, respectively. Uh, at the same time, uh, all of our clients and partners would have access to the historical uh, data, so they could be can go back in time, basically, and just extract the information that you need. So um, we'd have the up to 100% global um, coverage uh, as compared to the um, other satellite vendors. And that's something that, again, makes us different. That's something that uh, sets us apart from the competition. So the point here is, is that we're not just a software company. Uh, we're not standing still and we're always developing and trying to move forward to develop our technology to make the world a more sustainable and a better place in general. Speaking of sustainability, um, uh, we are currently um, aligning with 10 out of 17 United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. You can see them right there on the right-hand side. If you would like to learn more about that, we have more information publicly available on our website. So I guess Kirill could uh, send us some you know, links there in chat in case you guys want to understand more. So um, so it's, it's going to be easier for you to navigate. Uh, but again, we obviously um, care about the planet and we want to make it a better and more sustainable place. That's why we're here. That's why uh, we're developing our technologies and we're moving uh, forward. Um, when it comes to our products, I'd like to 
focus more on the solutions that we have there. These are the ready to use applications that we have. So uh, basically the systems that you can sign up for, you can create accounts and you can start using them right away. So our, we'll start with the crop monitoring application. This is our most popular system. Uh, it's sort of a, you know, a flagship, I would say, uh, that we have. And uh, this application, it's an uh, everything in one system that um, comes with different types of analytical data sets including uh, information on the your crop uh, health and the development of crops how well your fields are doing you have uh, information such as the you know vegetation indices things like NDVI Iraqi NDMI and a lot of other uh, indices you also have access to the historical data so you can go back in time and you can assess the development of your field how the crops were doing and basically the system allows you to have timely access to all of your fields no matter where you have them whether it's you know one location or you have a, a global operation um, happening all across the world in let's say australia canada united states no matter where your fields are located you have timely access to all of them and you can um, basically access all of them from one pane of glass so there is no need for you to switch between different types of applications and uh, of course, the system has um, different modules such as the weather analytics. So there you have information on precipitation, daily temperatures, uh, some of active temperatures, evapotranspiration, um, and, and many, many other parameters that are available for each of your fields. So basically the quality of the weather data is very high and you can easily export the data in case, let's say you're working with your um, farmers let's say smallholder farmers which is a very popular model and you're just trying to provide them with advisory services to make their operations more successful to give them more power and more flexibility what you could do is one of the easy uh, models for you for example would be to use our crop monitoring and, and export the information in a form of pdf reports and then just deliver that to your clients so they would know exactly what's going on there with all of their fields uh, on a, let's say weekly basis or depending on the time frame that is comfortable for you on top of that, the system is equipped with the, uh, the modules that allow you to build your vegetation and productivity maps. So if let's say you're um, um, an input supplier and you're, let's say, selling, uh, pr pr producing and selling your chemicals to uh, to the clients, you know, the farmers like uh, fertilizers or crop protecting products, and you just want to build that additional, you know, like and an, a better relationship with your client what you could do is use the um, uh, vegetation productivity maps to help your uh, clients uh, put the proper amounts of fertilizers to their fields so you would know exactly where you need to put more uh let's say that of that specific fertilizer whether it's you know nitrogen or npk or anything like it and you know without the need to put the unnecessary stress on the soil on the crops and basically that's again something that would help you build better relationship with your clients uh, long-term relationship um, the system has a lot of other modules uh, one more that i would like to focus on is that uh, it's uh, the mobile application that allows you to timely and effectively communicate with all of your colleagues with the uh, team members you know that have actually boots on the ground so all of your agronomists all of your scouts people actually go into the field and check the 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 status of the crops so the mobile application again is an extremely powerful tool that allows you to very effectively and most importantly timely communicate with your colleagues so you can um, uh, avert any type of crop disasters in a blink of an eye so again if you're interested in this application if you want to learn more about the functionalities um, you can again just uh, get in touch with us uh, we can you know, set up a call we can discovery um, um, conversation can talk more about the specifics and how exactly this system can help you and on top of that you can either get the data via our user interface which is the crop monitoring system or you can get the data via api so if let's say you had your own system um, your own application a gis system i mean and you just wanted to make it more insightful more actionable more powerful you wanted to add additional features and functionalities 
an API integration would be a perfect fit here for you because again, we're just basically in the back, we're sending all of the data, all of the raw data, the analytics on top of that. And you're just, you know, using your system to visualize the data and again, deliver that to your clients and, and partners. Um, anyways, moving on to the forest monitoring. So this one, is um, a very similar system, a very similar solution to the crop monitoring, but obviously its focus is the forest stand. So here we're talking about up to 10 different solutions upon request. And there you would have access to different types of modules, including deforestation, forest health, reforestation, carbon stock, and you know, a burnt area estimation. So a lot of data modules to have access to and in this case we try to uh, further increase the quality and accuracy of this solution by uh, working together with you so uh, in in some cases we uh, would be happy to uh, have some of the samples let's some of the ground data as we call it from your side so in order again to build a model a custom algorithm uh, that would work very accurately and deliver high quality of results specifically for your use case. So we'd, uh, we'd be happy again to, to talk um, more with you and again, get more specific with regards to your uh, use case. So again, if you have any questions on this type of system and you want to um, understand the functionalities of it more, just uh, reach out to us. We'd be happy to sit down and uh, provide you with more information. Uh, last but not least, it's our land viewer application and this is um actually it's it's a sort of a marketplace for the satellite imagery and here you can simply log in you can create an account uh, and you can basically outline the area of your interest um or you can you know upload a kml or kmz file and then start looking for the right type of satellite imagery for your specific um, project uh, so here you can filter the imagery by the resolution by the revisit by the specific um, indices uh, the analytical layers so again it's just a system uh, that allows you to have access to a lot of different satellites um, in in real time basically again just allowing you to be more productive when it comes to your business so we can move on and here we uh we can uh, we have actually our um custom solutions uh so we can talk a lot about the custom solutions and we actually have separate webinars for some of those solutions so like yield prediction and crop classification so if you again would like to understand the concept for those systems and solutions more again you can uh, you're more than welcome to watch those webinars uh, we have the recordings they're available uh, on, on the youtube channel uh, but in a nutshell uh, like i said the idea behind the custom solutions is that our science teams our science division can basically develop any custom model any custom algorithm uh, for your specific use case whether again if you're interested in crop classification or identificational field boundaries uh, we just need to understand the the geography first of all so that's very important where exactly you want to conduct that specific um, project and we would need to understand the list of crops so what exactly uh, what types of crops you let's say would want to classify then uh, it'd be great if you could give us some historical data some samples of the fields again all of that is used for us to enrich the model to make sure that we deliver you uh, a solution that would make sense and that would deliver a high quality of uh, of results so again the same thing here if you have any questions you can get in touch and we'll be happy to provide more information and talk about the specifics of the of your use case um, if we uh, take a look at the right side here so you see that we also have the white label system and this is um in a way it's a unique solution um so the way it works is we basically can develop your own crop monitoring system. So uh, put the system uh, together from scratch, uh, build it from the ground up, and then you can put your company logo, you can uh, white label it with your um, colors, with your domain, and like, as if you built your own system. So in this, uh, in this way, we just basically take it all off your shoulders. You do not need to invest millions of dollars into the, the research and development of your own application because we've already done it. You know, we already have that system, so you don't need to reinvent the wheel in a way. And basically, we are again staying in the back behind the scenes. We're taking care of the 
heavy lifting of all of the technical aspects, making sure that your system is highly available, it's functioning well, it has regular updates, um, all of the features are functioning properly, and your clients are happy. Whereas you as a business owner is just focusing on delivering more information, more values to your clients, and again, just uh, uh, generating more business with the help of this application. Again, whether you're using this as a standalone solution or you're combining this with your existing solution or a system again if it's a product or a service um, depending on the business model that you have but the point is we do have a possibility of building your own application and you can white label it so it's it's there and it's something that again makes our product line even more interesting um now we're moving to the partnership ecosystem and um our um, main partner's goal is obviously to build a global uh, network of resellers supporting and developing companies all around the world and strengthening their market presence and establishing mutually beneficial relationships that can last um, long so we work with different type of companies um, different organizations uh, both you know small and big companies whether you're a farmers cooperative or an insurance company or you provide agri consultant services we would be happy to work with all of you and again because we're very flexible and dynamic and we have different uh, lines of solutions to offer we would most likely have a system for you and we would cover your needs in full so again depending on again the business the nature of your business what you do how you operate with your clients our solutions can be applied in a lot of different ways but the point here is that they would give you more flexibility more power and more features to deliver um, more more basically uh, with less. So again, if you are interested to understanding the concepts and some of the um, uh, ways and how we could, let's say, collaborate together, just let us know and we will take it from there. Um, some of the, again, speaking of the partner program benefits, you could um, become our reseller let's say reseller slash partner and you could easily use one of our solutions let's say you take the crop monitoring the, the most popular solution that we have and you could easily just you know resell it basically you get it for an x amount of money from us and then you resell it for a y amount of money for to your clients or could use a more sophisticated approach you could again bundle our system together with your service maybe you're you know, your consultant you could provide some reports you can even invite your clients to be a part of the crop monitoring system where they would be able to keep track of their fields in this case you can again provide um, some training sessions uh, support and guidance helping your clients understand how the um, features function how the system operates and how your clients can get more information with regards to their field performance and how they can grow more with less how they can be more effective more productive and how they can optimize their farm management activities accordingly with the help of such solutions so it all i would say comes down to your business to the nature of your organization your um, core values um how you operate how you work with clients so it's all very important uh, but at the end of the day once you have uh, an application like this in place uh your clients um will will be very very happy and uh again if you have questions please use the chat so again Kirill's is there i see we have um some questions and kirill's been uh very active with replying to those so um at this point um I'd like to pass the floor um, to our dear partner from Georgia. We have Amy from uh, the Georgian Farmers Association. So I'd like again to pass the floor to uh, to Amy. So Amy, please take over.
Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you, Alexander, for uh, including us in this webinar. My pleasure to share our experience. Uh, firstly, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Annie. As Alexander said, I represent Georgian Farmers Association. Uh, and briefly saying, our association is one of the largest in Georgia. Uh, it is established uh, in 2012 and unites over 5,000 farmers. And basically what we are doing is uh, building uh, capacity uh, in agriculture sector of Georgia and we are uh, our activities are built on advocacy capacity building networking and etc uh, so what we are doing is we are providing guidance it could be technical uh, guidance or ser we are also connecting to service pro providers we are uh, we are finding different sources of fundings and uh, we are basically identifying the uh, different needs of the farmers and we are trying to find the solutions. Uh, therefore, um, uh, therefore, speaking a little bit more, we coordinate between government, uh, donor bodies, and also private sector in agriculture. And what we did is uh, we uh, designed the services that um, that yeah, that are drafted to boost the agriculture sector in Georgia. Because recently, agriculture in Georgia is developing in a fast phase, so it needs really effective solutions solutions and smart agriculture solutions. And that's why uh, partnership with USDA is crucial for us. And we are using crop monitoring system. Uh, we were testing uh, this system for almost a, an year. Uh, the head of agronomy and certification in our organization, who is also a very successful farmer, uh, was testing uh, this platform uh, for, uh, for one year. And when we found out that it was uh, really precise and was easy to use. And it gave uh, the data that is really important for Georgia, for example, weather data and historical data uh, and many more. Then we decided to contact the USDA team and start the partnership with them. So what we were surprised uh, with the easy and very quick communication with USDA team. And we quickly onboarded uh, with the partnership we are at the moment and reseller on a reseller agreement uh, and basically we are using um, we are using USDA in many different fields uh, for example I will show you now uh, we are uh, using it to elaborate more on data it is it's helped us to better coordinate with donor programs also with government and we are also providing farmers with different consultations such as for example technical support in farm, it could be also operational side uh, of management, it also could be budgeting um, and many other consultation fields. So what we are doing is we are adding value to our services with uh, crop monitoring platform. We are providing uh, access to the platform and also we are adding the value by providing different consultations. We are reading the data and offering different smart agriculture solutions and it, uh, it is really beneficial for smallholder farmers in Georgia. Uh, so um, this is really important to, um, uh, to mention. And we, besides that, we are like um, our partnership with EOSDA, uh, we have a very clear vision. Where are we going to continue and how we are going to uh, promote uh, this platform? Uh, first of all, what we uh, are going to do is raise awareness and among farmers and also keep an eye on governmental projects because recently Georgia started digitalization of, uh, for example, plot registering and uh, for, uh, for example, even uh, regarding forests. So it is important uh, for us to keep an eye on uh, governmental projects. Also, we are offering uh, to analyze different fields uh, for investors. For example, we are looking for the weather data, whether it is suitable for uh, specific 
specific um, uh, specific, specific plans uh, and whether it it will be risky to do this kind of investments. Uh, we are uh, closely working with banks, and uh, we recently had uh, several joint uh, events with uh, uh, one of the largest bank in Georgia, and we provided training on uh, innovative uh, solutions because Georgian Farmers Association is trying to give farmers uh, different uh, um, agriculture practices, which, uh, for example, are innovative technologies. And one of the tools is definitely crop monitoring platform uh, and this system. So we are going to continue in this way. And also what we are going to do with banks is we are going to be intermediary and assess their creditors uh, if the creditors fields are risky, if their management goes well. Uh, so and also in terms of monitoring of the fields. So we are definitely going this way. Uh, we are also speaking with different insurance uh, insurers because uh, agriculture insurance is going to develop even more in Georgia. And also we are including um, uh, this USDA system and crop monitoring in different proposals for uh, projects uh, for donor uh, funded projects and also with partnership with different NGOs. So uh, this is also uh, we are going to definitely work in this way. And what I am going to say is that uh, partnership with the USDA really he helps in terms of uh, marketing and promotion. We really feel this support. Uh, and also if we have big uh, clients that really needs uh, to be, like if their solutions need to be elaborated even deeper and in a uh, very specific and professional way, uh, USDA team can jump into the meeting and um, have this joint meeting with us, which is really important. And we feel this uh, support of having very uh, valuable and reliable, stable partner with us. So big thanks uh, for that. And I will uh, give back microphone to Alexander. And if you will have any questions regarding how we work with farmers or what kind of consultations we have, you could ask in the chat and then we could continue in the end of the session. Thank you. Thank you, Annie. This is a very, very productive, I would say, and very interesting, actually. I'm impressed by the number of you know, different verticals and types of clients that you work in, you know, farmers and <laughs> go all the way to the insurance and banks and even the government. So it's great to know that um, you've been this active and we appreciate you having as a partner. And we hope that you will be able to conquer new markets, new business verticals and get more clients. So again, just popularizing this type of technology across Georgia and, you know, other countries as well. Yes, this platform gives the opportunity to build many different ideas and many different uh, directions. So definitely it's about just brainstorming and understand, crafting the different business models. That's Thank you, great. Alexander. Thank you, Annie, again. Great having you. I'm sure we'll have more questions for you because it looks like yeah, Kirill is gathering those questions. So yeah, we'll get back to you right at the end of this session. And uh, for now, I'd like to uh well basically move on and we have our next um partner our speaker today uh this time uh from germany we have uh we're happy to have susan uh, from susan shuttle um uh, environment uh, environment data from germany uh so susan thank you for being with us today the floor is you the floor is yours so please take over Yes, thank you very much, Alexander. And uh, it's an honor to be part of today's presentation and uh, be here with, with your partners from around the world. Thank you very much. So let me first introduce uh, myself and, and the company. My background is that I'm a political scientist by education and I have about more than 20 years of professional experience in leadership positions ranging from local to international level and also from NGOs to public policy areas and research institutions. And I have a very practical atmospheric experience because as you can see in the picture on the right side, I'm a glider pilot, a very passionate glider pilot. And that actually altogether brought me to the question three years ago, 
uh, what will be very important topics for the next decades. And we naturally come to the question, how are we living here on this planet? Um, how is it possible to live in a sustainable way? So I launched the company that uh, Alexander already mentioned with the motto, making net zero fly. What is behind that? Um, first of all, promote Earth-friendly action overall. Um, and secondly, very importantly, improve the transparency on emission-induced climate change and especially soil-air interaction. And a third topic is emission verification, because without emission verification, we will not be able to track the progress that we want to make on being uh, climate neutral and, and having net zero anthropogenic emissions. How is this all possible? That's um, only manageable with respective measurement and data systems. And that's, of course, including remote sensing and in situ systems. And furthermore, agriculture is a key area for improving the resource management in order to mitigate climate change. Through that, naturally, with this approach, um, EOSTAR is a partner to be looked out for. And luckily, I was already in my professional previous experience in contact with the founder of EOSTAR, Max Polyakov, and his management team. And right from the start, it used to be a very informative impressive and innovative cooperation and i'm very happy to be able to continue this in the today's partnership last year we launched a, a short project it was a bid for a tender from a german government entity for satellite data so that is what alexander mentioned regarding the land viewer um, eostar is also a very professional provider of satellite data high resolution data and knowing where where to receive this and, and how to present it in the right way. And after that, we continued our conversations and I was introduced to EOSTAR's crop monitoring platform. With the information that I received, I then went to different uh, rele relevant um, potential partners. So I talked to farmers, I talked to government representatives and also to research institutions. And the overall feedback was so positive that I said it's right the right time to to start an official partnership so use cases at the moment are first of all introduce the crop monitoring platform to farmers in germany we have a very diverse landscape in the southwest we have very many smallholder farmers with um, areas of up to 35, 50 hectares of, of land area. And in the Northeast, um, based on the history in, in Eastern Germany, we have very big field areas with 2,000 to 3,000 hectares with an industrial approach to agriculture. So the main activities are getting into contact with the end users and promoting the crop monitoring platform to help enter into the industry world or agricultural world 4.0, so to say, using satellite data combined with weather information and field activity logs, which is possible um, through the crop monitoring platform. One of the main points to promote is that it's possible to improve the efficiency in the activities. And I would just like to mention one example, which is very relevant for sustainability. Um, the fertilizer use um, is very important if nitrogen is playing a part here because reducing nitrogen use and nitrogen loss is one of the main areas we need to work on in the, few, in the next decades. With nitrogen re reduction, we can also reduce greenhouse gas emissions. So that's a very uh, interesting point to look out for. Another area of activity is offering the API solution um, because there are many mm, apps already on the market which have a very specified special use area, for example, for the diagnostic of soil quality. And it is possible to combine the data that the crop monitoring platform is with these applications. Um, Another politically maybe important point is that um, the crop monitoring solution from EOSTAR is independent from any large manufacturers and uh, producers of seeds, fertilizers and pesticides, which also means the data that the farmer enters into the system will not be interpreted by 
the suppliers that he has, but it will be independent and in his own range of activity. And last but not least, um, there are government institutions and NGOs in Germany working in the field of international cooperation for sustainable development. And we found out there are also interesting use cases to develop. For the future outlook, um, it will be important to, to raise the synergies um, looking for specialized providers and suppliers, which is already on a promising path. Um, EOSTAR as um, an expert in remote sensing and uh, data analytics and also especially with the dedicated satellites that you have, which are focused on providing agricultural data, that's a very interesting um, partner in the network of German and EU companies and institutions and we have a network here in Germany which is called Space to Agriculture and naturally we are part of that and, and promoting EOSTAR there as well. There are potential cooperations with German universities because there are programs especially for digitalization in agriculture and we also look for public co-funding programs for farmers for such investments into digitalization and in Germany as we have 16 states there are basically 16 different programs so that's a part to work on also for the future. Um, we appreciate very much the cooperation with EOSTAR and with the team of which you have now today seen Valeria and Alexander. Um, there is a very comprehensive support and a feedback loop which is um, helping us also de to, to develop um, the cooperation in a very nice way. And I'm looking forward to any questions that you might have and I would like to hand the floor back to Alexander. Thank you very much for your interest. Thank you, Susan. This was very informative. And uh, well, again, I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, one, one thing that you mentioned is that the um, heavy use of uh, chemicals, um, the likes of fertilizers and you know, pesticides is becoming a, it's always been a challenge, but now it's becoming even a, a bigger problem. And it's great to know that you are trying to fight this uh, as much as you can, and you're trying to make the world a better place a more sustainable place so again thank you for that and uh, we'll try to develop our solutions you know from our side to make them as good as they can get in order again to give you more functionality to give you all the technical support that you need to again make the world a better place yes thank you thank you um okay we are in the middle of our uh, webinar i would say and today I would like to uh, welcome our next uh, partner. Uh, this time is from uh, from Colombia, from Latin America. We have Daniel from Geosat, and he's been he's going to talk about their specific use case, how exactly they've been using our solutions. Daniel, are you with us? Thank you for joining. I see you're there. So again, please uh, take over the floor for yours. Thank you, Alexander, and uh, thank you, a AUSDA, uh, having us today in this webinar talking with you. Uh, I'm going to show you a little bit about our company and uh, about what we are doing with EOSDA technology and a, a big use case that we are like working right now in Colombia. So first of all, um, we are using uh, GeoBristol. GeoBristol is an EOSDA crop monitoring white label solution, uh, specialized in, in Latin America. Uh, and it's, ba it's, it's backed by Geosat. Geosat is a 30 year expertise company working with GIS uh, and in, in different industries in, in Colombia and also in other uh, Latin America countries. Uh, in Geosat, we are like geo experts uh, and we are like feeling fully geo bristol mission. Um, we have executed imp impactful projects uh, with national government, with local governments. Also, we have com uh, completed uh, successful projects in Peru, in Ecuador, in Panama as well. And uh, I will talk a little bit about myself uh, before going like deep in, in the use case that we are like working in, in Colombia right now uh, with GeoBristol. Uh, I, I am a software developer. I have led uh, a lot of 
major projects with different governments and I'm also like an um, entrepreneur. So I'm, I, I really like what, what, what EOSDA is doing with crop monitoring because I think it's a really well cracked solution and we haven't uh, find something similar in, in the world. So that's why we decided to go and work with them uh, and, and to bring this solution to all Latin America. So to go deeper in the use case we're, we're working is, we equip 2,800 farmers in Medellin. Medellin is the second larger, largest city in Colombia. Uh, enable, enabling efficient crop monitoring for the Alcaldía of Medellín and the, with the FAO, the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. We work with them, along with them, to help the government to understand what's happening in, in every farmer's land and to allow them to bypass like the a plot by plot uh, visiting and to help government to go straight to the farmer that is needing a, um, a solution or, or, or to go straight to the farmer that is having a problem. So what, what we did, what we made is to connect the farmers with the government to make them successful. So all of this is um, in a project that is called Comer. Comer is a project led by Alcaldía of Medellín and the FAO. And what, what they're looking is to help Medellín uh, to be, to, to secure their food and um, driving the city to be successful in city farming, okay, in, the, in the city farming community, because uh, the new government in Colombia is working like very hard to make Colombia a, um, like a very success, successful farming country. So we are like doing a, a lot of research and we are like helping ha farmers to be successful. So using this tool, using GeoBristol, that is a white label a crop monitoring solution, we can go to every farmer a, a specific problem and, and help them to be successfully like easily. So uh, in, in summary, we have 2,800 farmers. Uh, we have 7,800 uh, plots and more than 40 crop varieties in, in Medellin. And uh, we are like um, mapping Medellin. Now we are going to map a uh, biggest area to help uh, to help government to assist farmers in need by passing the need of parcel by parcel visit and focusing the efforts where it matters most. And uh, we are not just stopping in Colombia. Our vision is uh, to transform agriculture across Latin America. So we are like uh, paving the way to go to other countries. And now we are having some talks with different governments and uh, farmers in, in different latitudes. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Alexander, I think it's, that's my... Thank you, Daniel. And yes, this is this is great. Again, another great story. And this time it's a, a perfect use case of how our partners are using and utilizing the white labeling capability. So, uh, I mean, you've been telling us that the system was able to help you connect with the farmers, you know, you connect the farmers with the government. So this is great. I mean, I am inspired by the story and I hope that this project is going to only be, you know, ramping up and you will be acquiring and onboarding more and more partners and who knows maybe you're going to be delivering this as a service to yeah larger audiences and uh, other geographies there so i I'm, I'm really hoping for that so thank you thank you for your efforts daniel yeah indeed indeed what we are doing right now is like to make it this in a scale so we want to go to other governments to help their farmers to be successful in, in other countries that's thank great. you for having that's... me
Perfect. Yeah, it's, uh, the pleasure is all ours. Thank you again. Thank you so much for, for your story and for being here. Uh, I would like to move on if if you don't mind. I see we got some more questions coming in. So uh, I'm going to take over and I'm going to continue the our slide deck um, about the partnerships. So here you can see that we have, um, even though today we have a three of our partners kindly agreed to join um, our webinar, but obviously we have a larger network of partners and can see that there are different types of companies, different business verticals, different organizations, structures, big and small companies, companies like Hensel Cooperative from Canada, for example, going to AgriProof in Australia, to Nigeria, uh, where, where we have a great partner, Ag uh, AgriExchange. So many different organizations and their businesses, their values, the way they work with their clients, all of that would be unique in a way. And we, we respect that and we try to um, be an additional source for them um, additional source of information for them to make timely decisions and be more effective and efficient in our today's uh, world so we've basically discussed about the solutions the systems the services that we have so uh, i would say we've covered mostly the technical aspects you know the functionalities um, our partners have told us about their specific use cases and how exactly they're um, applying our technologies to their day-to-day -day, uh, activities what kind of um, clients they're working with whether it's the farmers insurance companies even the government um, and i'd like to also uh, speak a little about the very important side of each partnership and that's uh, the account management and customer success in this case from from our side it's not that we just give you a system you get a license from us for any of our solutions whether it's crop monitoring or forest monitoring let's say uh, and again you just go ahead and figure it out on your own just do whatever you want in us in this in this case it's not like that so we would provide you with all the information with our continuous support and assistance so it all starts with the uh, onboarding basically where we would uh, learn more about your business your specific use case what kind of companies and clients you work with uh, what challenges you have and how you would like to um, become more effective we provide you with training sessions demonstrations so obviously for a lot of you probably this type of technology is something new and you've never um, used any kind of remote sensing solutions before um, so it might seem a little bit scary at first but it's really not because uh, from our side you have all the support in the form of demonstrations and training sessions so we provide you uh, with those training sessions to help you understand how each of the features and functions work properly specifically with your um, use case with your crops let's say because again we have partners in Asia where they would let's say be growing sugarcane and bananas or um, or um, um, pineapples let's say and we also have partners in let's say the United States and Canada where let's say they have uh, corn crops soybeans things like that so obviously the the way you'll be using the system for each of those use cases would be a little bit different and that's where the true value of the training sessions come from basically because we are focused specifically on your use case and we're drilling down and focusing what what really matters for you you get your own dedicated account manager and it's not just a one person because in our case it's a team effort so you have access to um, our uh, all of our team members there and they would be ready to help you assist you with your questions day or night um, we also support you in terms of marketing so from our side it's important to make sure that you're growing as our partner you're progressing and your brand is being seen and found by more and more potential clients and buyers uh, in your region because your um values and advantages as our partner um, are clear to us you have the local presence you know the markets obviously you know your clients you know their challenges uh, their problems issues better than us and we do not want to compete with that we want to collaborate we want to join forces with you and we just want to empower you uh, through with the help of our marketing um, 
materials, our conferences. So we try to collaborate with our partners um, on the on the marketing front. I would say so we do a lot of publications, a lot of joint articles, uh, and press announcements, press releases. We do webinars. Well, similar to the one that we're actually doing right now. Just again to spread the word about our partner to make sure that they are seen and found and they um, get more attention from uh, potential potential clients in their region so this is very important and it's something that we also focus on not just you know the technological part of it and like i said from our side you can expect help with the um, uh, uh, promoting your brand uh, via publications on our website and all across the social media channels that we have. We can also help you with creating public, uh, publishing the case studies, different case, uh, uh, the success stories, uh, the interesting projects that you're working on and how our solutions are helping you get your um, goals achieved. And also we're um, organizing and conducting webinars and not just that because we also go to different types of um, um, events different um, uh, road shows where we again would like to collaborate with our partners um tete tete so to speak so it's something that we try to be very active with and now um we've almost um, gotten to the finish line of this um, presentation of this webinar today I would like just to um, present you some of the new um, EOSDA bundle um, offers for our partnership, uh, for our partners. And in this case, we try to um, give you more flexibility uh, by combining different types of solutions. So in this case, what you can do is just not, not simply use the crop monitoring, let's say, but you can uh, also combine it with a different type of solution. Let's say the forest monitoring. Maybe some of your clients are farmers, but maybe some of your clients are also the forest owners and they would need some help with the forest monitoring. So this is something that you can also do. We can offer you um, uh, combined joint licenses for both of the solutions. So that way you can diversify your uh, service and product portfolio and deliver more to your uh, to your clients and audience on top of that you can also get your hands for example on the high resolution imagery plus in combination with the crop monitoring application so in this case if let's say you're working with um, with farmers um, uh, who have uh, let's say tiny fields let's say less than one acre and you need obviously to see a bit a good picture and um, you need to have high resolution for that so this is something that you can use in order to get the proper image of all of your clients fields so again you can use that model potentially at the same time you can easily combine the crop monitoring with any of the custom solutions such as yield prediction or crop classification we've seen partners starting with again just one simple solution uh i mean simple model uh not, not the solution uh simple partner model let's say but then they would be able to grow into something bigger and they would be offering different types of custom solutions as well to the government to different agencies to banks insurance companies and again that's opening a new lines of businesses for you that's opening new doors so in our case the way we see it is we're giving you um the tools the tools that can open you help you open those doors for you to be more successful be more effective and generate more um, income at the end of the day you know just to be uh, a successful business in your market so we again if you have any questions with regards to any of the custom solutions or any of our systems like crop or forest monitoring we would be happy to sit down with you please schedule um discovery calls with us again either um, via our uh, website or you can uh, drop your contact details here in chat and we'll be getting back to you in order to set up the um, those conversations and at this point i would say that um that's pretty much it from our side i hope this webinar was informative and you guys enjoyed it as much as um, i did because it sure was a pleasure to have all of you here to talk about a lot of different case studies and stories uh, now we've gotten to our q a session so we have some questions so let me just open them and i'll try to address 
I see that we have quite a number of questions there, but I would just, I'm not sure if we'll be able to answer all of them. So we have question. The first one is how far back for historical data. So I assume, yeah, that's obviously the question with regards to the historical data. So in this case, we have um, different types of, because we have different types of data modules. So when it comes, let's say to the um, crop performance, things like NDVI, uh, RACI, the indices, I would say, uh, we have the information going back to 2016. So basically you have uh, several years worth of data and you can um, stack it up against each other. You can compare the field performance year over year just to see how uh, the tendency is looking. When it comes to, let's say, the weather, the historical weather data, including the precipitation, the um, uh, all of the weather parameters that we have there, so the temperatures, uh, the evapotranspiration, and all of those parameters that we have there. In this case, the, we have the historical weather data going back to 1979. So basically, um, many years, many years worth of data. So that's a lot of information that you can get your hands on and basically analyze. Um, have ne next question. Uh, do you have the coverage in the UK and Africa? Uh, yes, we do have the coverage, the satellite coverage in both of the countries. Um, as a matter of fact, we're not uh, limited in any way because our satellites, uh, well, basically they have the global coverage. So we have the information for any part of the world sometimes. Um, and that's actually something that um, is leading me to my next question. How do you handle the cloud cover? Sometimes uh, because of a dense cloud cover, our satellites would not be able to make the uh, a good image, I would say, because obviously these satellites are optical and they are not able to uh, penetrate tr through cloud. So in this case, what we usually do, the way we tackle such use cases is we would recommend using the high resolution imagery module, because in this case, you would also get the uh, higher frequency of update. You would get daily images, so you increase the uh, frequency of your updates, thus you increase the chances of having that cloud-free image. So something that can help you get the right type of imagery available in your in your system. On top of that, um, uh, you basically uh, let me just go to. On top of that, um, we also have the cloud masking algorithm uh, available in our crop monitoring applications. And it's something that allows you to um, basically, even though, even if there is a bit of a, let's say, cloud covering your field, we still are able to mask it. So that way you can see the rest of the field. Let's say your field is 10 hectares and the cloud is masking one hectare of it. So we would just, you know, mask it, mask that one hectare of the field, whereas you're, you're going to still see the clear picture of the nine hectares of your fields. You know, the 90% of the field is still going to be there and you will get the analytics and you would know what to do with the rest of the field. But again, you can be flexible there in the system, in the crop monitoring, we have uh, um, the, the cloud masking algorithm allows you to basically uh, specify the threshold for your, um, um cloudiness so you can be flexible and pick the right type of imagery that you want um moving on um what is the pixel resolution being collected by your satellite so for now we have uh, two types of satellite imagery available it's the standard which is 10 meters per pixel and then we have the high resolution the one that i was just uh, mentioning and that's three meters per pixel uh, when it comes to the eos set data so the resolution of this satellite is 2.8 meters so this is a very i would say high uh resolution i hope this answers uh your question so we have uh we have another question do you provide the raw data straight to the farmer so they can make their own decisions or do you also provide your own informed actionable recommendations so we again it depends it, we can either deliver that straight to the farmer uh again and it can either be the raw data if it's the api let's say that you're referring to or you can get the information in our crop monitoring and again that could either be sent to you as our partner and then you can just take it and then further distribute to your farmers or you can again in a form of different reports 
or again, you can send them information via the um, mobile application. Uh, you can download and generate PDF reports, or you can even invite your clients and farmers into the crop monitoring application so they can have access to their field. So you act, you as a partner, let's say you would be the master admin of the system. You would have all of the rights and you just be deciding on um, what your partner, what your clients can see inside of the crop monitoring application and what kind of rights they will have there. So I think, let me see. Okay, we have more questions. Um, so um, do you have, I'm, I'm gonna start with the, with the most recent one. Do you have any wheat or disease models? Uh, we actually do, we do have them. We are actively working on them as uh, custom solutions and we're also integrating and add new features. The big features, I would say, um, uh, crop disease um, uh, modeling is something that we're going to integrate inside of our crop monitoring by the end of this uh, year. So that's a big feature. But for now, most of the time we're tackling this kind of problem with the um, with the custom solution. So again, uh, if you want to learn more, uh, we'd like again to sit down and try to understand the specifics and the nature of your um, um, inquiry and what exactly you're trying to achieve there. Um, so, okay, I have a question. So how accurate is the soil satellite data compared to the in-ground sensors? Um, obviously, the in-ground sensors will provide you a higher accuracy of the information but uh, we're also getting the information from the ground um, uh, ground stations because we, uh, we we have our uh, weather providers you know our partners also you know supplement the data that we get from the satellites and we combine the information from the um, ground stations thus we have a higher flexibility i would say and that's something that gives us that you know upper hand uh but yes generally speaking the information from the satellites um would not be of extreme quality but still it's of pretty high pretty high standard i would say um so i'm, I'm going through the questions there uh so, okay, how much does it cost? You know, I assume that the technology. So the the question about the pricing options. So um, the pricing options that we have for our solutions would be different because it's going to vary. And again, whether it's the standalone applications that we're talking or the custom solution. So I would um, suggest to get in touch with us or we're going to get back to you given that we have your contact details. We can, again, be more specific with regards to the specific solution that you're, um, that you're um, interested in. Um, near real time. Or... Okay, so in, term, in terms of uh, near real time monitoring, what is the time lag of image updates? so basically the again it, it has to do with the satellite that we're using so if it's you know the standard resolution of 10 meters we're talking about the revisit of about every five seven days so every week you can expect a new satellite image available in the system um, again depending on the cloud cover sometimes if it's you know a dense cloud cover you might want to use the high resolution again and a high resolution um, satellite uh, allows us to have the daily revisit sometimes even more you can expect even more than one um, satellite image per day so that's um, that's pretty pretty much the frequency i would say but usually again because the agriculture in general um you do not really need to have that daily revisit you know even if you get a satellite uh, imagery update every let's say um every every week that is usually that is usually enough uh so okay i'm looking at the i think i might have uh, I have a question, I, I guess, to one of our partners. Uh, I think any, probably if, if any is still with us, uh, um, I'm, I'm going to read this. So uh, the question is, what was the ROI in your experience when you adopted this crop monitoring solution? 
and what ways did it improve the agricultural operations? Uh, in our case, uh, ROI, uh, what is meant by this abbreviation? It's the return uh, ro on ROI, investment. So in yeah. return, return on investment. investment. Uh, yeah, it's a really like internal uh, data, but um, actually in our case, it's not oriented on uh, ROI because we are uh, NGO and for us, it's more about giving innovation and giving these uh, technologies and tools to the farmers. So we have very um, little incremental um, income on that. So that's that's why we are more oriented to have more farmers and actually to have more awareness regarding uh, this platform um, than like uh, looking to the ROI. But I think think if uh, someone would look at this as a um, business model, it would be quite uh, high because in case they would add different consultations and also if they would have uh, like one window service, for example, if they would partner with different companies who would do um, many different things in the value chain, for example, like uh, uh, some of the agriculture companies that provide uh, supply for the farm, uh, someone who is doing the actual infrastructure and many, many more. So if uh, someone works with all of this chain, uh, in this case, it could be really good, a really good business model. And actually, we are eventually going, uh, to, going there. And I'm sure uh, in nearest future, we are going to have the full service. So we are going to be full service providers ourselves as well. Because, Thanks. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your input on this. I um, I also might have uh, a question to probably Daniel. And again, it's a uh, it's the question about the the costs uh, for small and medium uh, farmers because again, uh, uh, there in in Colombia, you you're working with the with the small farmers, you know, primarily. So the question is, how much does it does this technology cost, you know, especially for the small and medium farmers? I, I guess we could rephrase it probably and whether the farmers, you know, are benefiting, whether their investment into this technology is, is positive, whether they're seeing, you know, the positive outcome from this technology when compared to the, you know, uh, to the dollar signs they're investing into this. Yeah, the, um, the cost for farmers is, is zero because we are like a charging government. Government is paying for them because they are like uh, a, the, the government is trying to make little farmers to be successful. So they're trying to make them to be competitive. Also, we are like doing some um, alliances with some companies because companies also uh, buy the crops from these little farmers. So they also are willing to pay the software to the farmers, not not only paying the software, but giving them assistance and giving them a help to adopt the technology because making these farmers to adopt technologies are really hard. So you have to uh, help them like constantly and to have like some uh, company or, or some government constantly helping them to to do that mm -hmm. i see okay that that makes sense and yeah, thank you for thank you for your um, answer um one more question that i have and it's an interesting question uh from africa um it seems that it's from africa so probably i can um i can address this question to to susan uh, because again, Susan is focusing heavily on making on the sustainability part of it. So the question is, how can you assist us in the environmental impact assessment? It says the Rift Valley Lakes, right, which is I believe in Africa. But in general, Susan, if you could uh, maybe give us a bit of an input on how can you in general you know assist uh, in the environmental impact assessment you know let's say uh, not just you know in in africa but globally let's say yeah that's a very interesting question uh, thank you very much um of course with the just already with the crop monitoring platform um 
the the uh, good thing about it is that you are gathering the data historical data for the fields that you are managing so that is all there as a depository and you can connect that with the um, field activity data so that means uh, how many seeds did you sow how many fertilizers did you apply how many pesticides did you apply and you can compare that then with previous activities without such tools for precision agriculture and you can see what sort of savings you have and you might even combine that with the yield prediction and that then gives you a quite good picture on how you improve the management also in the relevant way for, for sustainability and the protection of the environment. In addition to that, I would say that the, the part that you offer for the forest monitoring and in general for the land viewer um, offers many opportunities to to closely watch, so to say, even if it's not visible data, but analysis analysis of, of um, vegetation data, of growth indices, etc., combined with weather information and climate information that also allows to give a, a more comprehensive picture than just taking samples on the ground, for example. Um, so I think there are many opportunities. And uh, from my experience working with EOSTAR, um, there, there is a very good openness for such approaches and to look into what is possible in the future. Um, I saw in the questions there was also mentioned soil organic carbon. Um, I'm aware of that, that your scientist team is also working on that. Um, and it will be important to have ground truthing data to be able to, to train the models based on satellite data. But that is also all possible and, and a very positive point that I would like to mention. So I hope this helps as an input from my side. I, I think, yes, yeah, so I, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. So again, thank you, Susan, mm -hmm. for your input. So this is very, this is very helpful. So again, thank you. Uh, thank you again. So um, I, I see that we have more and more questions, but unfortunately we have, again, come to the finish line and we would be replying to all of the questions. So again, you guys, please do not worry, uh, we're not, going to forget about you but we're going to reply to each of you individually uh with the uh, with our replies basically so and um for now um i would just like to again thank thank everyone um all of our guest speakers all of our partners all of the attendees all of our you know the the audience the people who took the time to join us today um our moderator kirills thank you so much for being active there and replying to um taking care of the of the chat so again um i'm your host again alexander if you need me if you have any more questions for me if you would like to discuss partnership models and partner opportunities with eosda please uh, reach out to sales at eosda.com. And again, to those of you who we did not uh, reply, I mean, the questions uh, right now will be responding to you shortly. Thank you, everyone. It was great having you. Hope you have a great day and see you soon.